Oh, hey. I was just trying to describe like what it's like, like trying to lift like a really heavy e-bike and how do you do that? I mean, like, ah, I just turned my back. Whatever. I mean, this is a big topic. You know, a lot of times people talk about what's the weight of the e-bike? I mean, traditionally the measure of like how good a bike is in the traditional bike world is like how light it is. In the e-bike world, like this is a topic, but it's really like not that important. And so really today I want to just talk about like the pros and cons of like e-bike weight and like why e-bikes are heavier and sometimes that's not a terrible thing. Also maybe some tips on like if you want to lighten up your bike and how you might be able to do that or or maybe some of the compromises you might be making if you have a very lightweight bike. So in the traditional bike world it's always been kind of a measure of a bike is like how light it is and many people just go to extreme lengths to get to the point of having the lightest possible bike. You know they use carbon fiber on like every part possible. Sometimes they like remove the padding from their saddle which is kind of crazy, uh, you know, put smaller tires uh, to decrease the rolling resistance and decrease the weight and they work. Uh, they can make you faster. They generally make you a lot less un less comfortable, but you want to go fast and, you know, have a light bike. Uh, I guess this is a good thing to do, but in the electric bike world, this is really not as important of a factor. I think in some ways maybe it is, and to some people it still is, but the reality is for the majority of people, this is really not an important detail, not a detail that you should worry too much about, at least for that, for like going fast per se. I mean, I think actually in speaking with one of my friends who's actually a mountain bike racer, he put on his electric bike lighter weight wheels specifically and he said that was one of the really uh, important detail and it made a big difference so he put specifically carbon fiber rims on his bike and then uh, he removed the tubes went tubeless and he found that that to be really helpful uh, you know maybe that was a reality but for the average person riding an electric bike uh, in, in those sort of ways or specifically riding an electric bike for transportation how important is that I don't know I mean, you do have a motor that's helping you, and oftentimes that motor is giving you upwards of three times what you can put into the bike yourself, so how, how important is that? I think some of the things, as I mentioned just briefly there before, removing some of the weight, you're oftentimes removing some of the comfort. You may be removing some of the reliability, or I don't know if it's necessarily reliability, but um, durability. Oftentimes, like if you have like a carbon fiber rim or aluminum rims, particularly a double wall aluminum rim, uh, would generally hold up better. I mean, a lot of times people will not specifically use carbon rims on the road because uh, they might be more susceptible to be damaged or something like that, you know. But you're a racer, you, maybe you don't care and you say, well, I, I just want to be as fast as I can and, you know, if I damage the rims, I, you know, I can afford it and my sponsor is going to give me new ones or whatever. But if you're an everyday commuter, you probably don't want to have carbon rims on your bike. I think where it becomes probably more important is just like moving the bike, like bringing it upstairs, uh, storing it in your apartment, bringing it into the train, whatever the case may be. Or at least in like my world of like thinking about bikes as transportation, thinking about how people generally using them, putting them on a bike rack and that sort of stuff. Because actually the ride experience, it can vary a little bit, but oftentimes the added weight of the bike, or at least of a quality bike, a lot of times the added weight is adding features, uh, oftentimes comfort features on the bike. Obviously a battery is gonna add to the weight, right? So the larger the battery, the longer your range, but you're gonna increase the weight. The motor obviously is gonna also add to the weight. And these things can generally add a significant amount to, to the bike and they can vary uh, depending on the, the bike and how it's made and what type of parts they use and that sort of thing. But I'd say somewhere uh, you know between 10 to 20 pounds of the motor and the battery. So in a very lightweight racing bike can be under 13 pounds, like, I mean, that's like a pretty extreme example, but so if you think about it, the motor and battery could potentially be like doubling that weight, even if you are able to actually add a motor and battery of 13 pounds on a 13 pound bike. Some companies have done it, but the reality is like, that bike's probably not really made to withstand the, the forces that that motor puts on it. You need to like beef up that frame. A lot of times the bike frames can tend to be heavier. So I think that's one of those details that people don't actually 
consider too much. Like, oh yeah, that bike seems so heavy, but it's actually, well, it's like one has a, a motor on, it's got a battery, and then you're adding, uh, you know, some weight to the frame to make it stronger. It's got more material. I think that this is actually a smart decision for the most part by frame manufacturers or manufacturers of the bikes to have them to be a bit stronger. And what that does is it makes it a little bit more stable. And what that in turn does is makes the bike safer because it makes it more predictable and it makes it handle better. Because I've ridden bikes that have motors on them. They really feel like they're not able to handle the power of that motor. They they're really kind of get a little like squirrely under you. That's not a good feeling. And I think it's it's important to consider that. Sometimes I felt bikes that, you know, you're you're going on the brakes hard and they just they just don't feel so stable or you're going down a hill fast and it doesn't feel so stable. So I think sometimes there's a case where weight is certainly it's overkill. Like these companies they, they don't really take any sort of precautions or, or considerations to weight and they just say, well like let's just put big tires on it and these wheels and they have like solid axles and whatever else and and really these bikes can tend to get pretty heavy. But there are some companies that, you know, they, they have considerations about weight, but the bikes still tend to get a little bit heavier, but every detail is still considered. Now, I'm gonna talk more about the components and, you know, you could kind of consider these details and say like, well, is this important to me or not? And I think these are important considerations when thinking about the weight and thinking about, you know, what is actually important to you because it's always gonna be a compromise. Some of you guys probably seen this like triangle where it's it's like uh, fast, good, and cheap. Kind of became most familiar with this in the construction world where people will say, well, you can have something that's fast and good, but it's not gonna be cheap. You can have something that's good and cheap, but it's not gonna be fast. And you know, you get the idea here. I think you can actually translate that same idea to the bike world, at least the traditional bike world. When you say like, is something can be reliable and light and cheap, so you can only pick two. So if it's gonna be reliable and cheap, it's not gonna be light. It's probably gonna be like a really heavy bike, uh, like a steel frame or something like that. You can have something that's cheap and light, but it's probably not gonna be reliable. Like a um, good example of this probably would be a like fake carbon fiber frame bought from Asia that's like not really, didn't go through quality control or anything like that. It'll probably break the first time you ride it, but it'll be light and it'll be cheap, but it, you know, probably won't be uh, really so reliable. I mean, that works for the traditional bike world. I don't know that it works for the e-bike world. Maybe it kind of does, but it's, you know, it's it's a challenge. It's the, These are those sort of kind of engineering things that are very difficult to overcome. What I've learned is that there's a lot of these manufacturers that make bikes that pe people can consider to be a bit heavier. What my experience is that they also tend to be a bit more reliable and my side uh, more comfortable too so maybe you can make another triangle with that sort of thing that might be more relevant to the electric bike world it's like comfortable you know and then like weight and then cost or something like that i don't know i'll leave that triangle aside for now but i wanted to talk about just the components right so first like starting with the wheels and tires now generally speaking having a wider tire is going to make the bike a bit more comfortable but it's going to add to the weight it's more mass right you have a bigger tire it's more mass but it's going to absorb some of the the street now some bikes have wide tires and they don't have any suspension the tires can kind of act as suspension in some ways and that's one way to actually save weight if you were to consider the, the possibility of removing suspension from the bike, but just having wider tires. But in the e-bike world, some tire between like two inches and 2.8 inches are probably the most common tire that we see is one tire in particular, it's called the Supermoto X, it's 2.4 inches wide. And that tire, it works well. And I've seen many bikes with no suspension in that tire and you run it at lower pressure and it works pretty well. Suspension, as I mentioned, that's, a, that's another one. The suspension fork can add a considerable amount of weight to a bike. I mean, if you compare it a non-suspension fork to a suspension fork, you're talking several pounds here. If you added a rear suspension to a bike, it's gonna add even more weight because you don't have just that rear shock, but you also have additional components to the frame of the bike that's gonna add to the complexity and hence, you know, add to the weight as well. 
Yeah, so those are the main things. And then some of the other stuff you might find that kind of related to suspension, something we're find on a lot of electric bikes or even electric bikes that don't necessarily come with them is suspension seat posts. In the traditional bike world, I don't know if they're as popular. I mean, you might find them more commonly on cruiser, certainly not so much on like racing bikes per se. But on electric bikes, I think they make a lot of sense. And they can add, a, a, again, a couple of pounds. You know, these things add up. So, you know, you have uh, maybe a pound or two for the tires in the most extreme case, you know, several pounds for the suspension. And then you're adding a suspension seat post for, you know, another a couple pounds on the more extreme side of things. These things certainly add up. But from my side personally, I wouldn't really want to ride a bike without these features. So, you know, some people might feel like, hey, I'd rather have the lightest weight bike possible. I don't care about losing those features. I don't care about being a little bit less comfortable. Now, it's not to say that you can't be comfortable on a bike with without these features. I mean, certainly plenty of people ride bikes without these sort of features on them but from my side I just just prefer it and it seems to be more the direction that most people with electric bikes go maybe it's the demographic of people that generally buy electric bikes I don't know I mean one of the things I also consider is that electric bikes can also often go faster so the faster you go the more important some of these things are because you're not just adding to comfort but you're also potentially adding to the stability of the bike as I mentioned before that stability is a really big deal you know starting with the frame having a really solid frame uh, that's not going to flex on you and then having a little bit of wider tire maybe better traction on the ground suspension can help you increase your traction as well so these details are important to consider. But outside of that, a lot of times the bikes will have maybe heavier duty parts on them. You know, they might have a, a different type of rim, an axle, a different drivetrain. So uh, many bikes might have, uh, you know, in the traditional bike world, you want the lightest weight uh, bike possible. You might want to go with no gears on your bike. You're going to save some weight there, but you're going to also lose some things in that way. You know, it might work just fine on a relatively flat surface, although certainly some people ride single speed bikes on, you know, all sorts of elevations. But with electric bikes, generally people have gear, so you can use what like traditional derailleur system or you can use an internally geared hub. Now an internally geared hub might give you some benefit of ease of use and lower maintenance, but it's also going to add to the weight. So it's important to consider like, hey, is this important to me? Do I need this? From from our experience, a lot of people choose to go in that direction. Maybe that just happens to be the, the customer base that we end up dealing with, that they're not super performance oriented. I mean, certainly people want good performance. They want to have a good experience on the bike. They want to feel, you know, some adrenaline and some exhilaration and riding the bike and want to feel like and can do similar things that you can do with the traditional non-electric bike. But I think, you know, given the option, you know, it just what's what's important to you. So you have this tire, suspension, frame, et cetera, some of the other details that can often be included on the bike. Sometimes maybe they might have an additional lock on the bike. Again, dinged with a couple more pounds. You know, maybe you might have a rack and fenders, some more weight, uh, lights on the bike. All, you know, features that you might find to be really helpful and really important, but you might not consider that, hey, this stuff's adding to the weight of the bike. Now you wanna make your bike lighter? Remove those parts, it'll help. But you know, just is it important to you? I think as I mentioned before, you know, some people's circumstances are different. You know, we work with a lot of people in New York City. We have a store in, in Brooklyn, New York, and sometimes people have to walk their bike upstairs. That can be challenging. Uh, you know, finding different ways to secure your bike or uh, to store it overnight, that can be a big challenge. So having a, a lighter weight, weight bike to carry upstairs or, you know, put in the elevator, etc. you know, this is, this is important to consider. But I think a lot of times people find different ways of making do because it's important to them to, to maintain these sort of features. Uh, maybe not as much in New York City is putting the bike on a, on a bike rack, on a car, right? The, this question comes up all the time. Say, hey, you know, I really like this bike, but it seems a little bit heavy. I'm concerned about lifting it on the bike rack. My general recommendation is get a hitch rack, a hitch mounted rack. So you have a, a hitch on your cars or, uh, or SUV or whatever the case may be. And you put this rack and it's basically trays. And the trays, oftentimes there's a couple different manufacturers. They offer a tray with a ramp. So you, 
you basically roll your bike up this ramp onto the bike rack and you don't really have to lift it. So even a person with minimal strength, maybe you have a back injury, whatever the case may be, you can get the bike on the rack with minimal effort and really not have an issue. So there are solutions to this. As I mentioned before, there are certainly manufacturers that just like, whatever, who cares? We're just, they're, they're looking more on the cheap side of the scale and they're not really too worried about like the reliability and weight thing. Some other little details that can add to the weight a little bit, you know, the handlebar setup, saddle. This is kind of minimal, but you know, some of the things like the more comfortable, they're generally gonna be a little bit heavier, a little bit more material and then what you have on the bike. One thing I should know, just a little tip to make it easier to lift a bike or to put it on the rack or whatever you need to do with it, remove the battery. You oftentimes save more than five pounds by doing so. So if you need to lift the bike, take the battery off, do it separate, you can thank me later. So what are we really talking about with weight on these bikes? Like, you know, as I mentioned, like what a race bike can be, I mean, but a traditional beach cruiser can be upwards of 30 pounds or so in a non-electric variant. But in the lightest electric bikes, I've seen somewhere in like the 30 pound range, the better ones or the better quality ones, I should say, generally are somewhere, you know, closer to 40 pounds. But you're seeing some like road bikes with very small motors and batteries. Some people, they're interesting. I guess they want to like ride with their friends, but they don't want their friends to know that they're riding an electric bike. Listen, I, I, whatever you want to do, it's all good. But the traditional bikes that we usually work with, they're a little bit heavier and they're usually, you know, start around 40 pounds, but many of them are upwards of 50, 60 pounds. Some of them go beyond that. Uh, really, you know, you increase the features on them, you're going to increase the weight. You're adding more to it. But the important thing is to know that that bike can actually handle that additional weight. They're not just like throwing this extra parts on a bike that's not made to carry it. But, you know, so I said, you know, somewhere in that 40 pound range, you could see cargo bikes upwards of 100 pounds, potentially more than that. But that's just the reality. Like those things like need to be heavier. They're carrying more weight, whatever the case may be. I think it works. I think it's important just to consider the context of this topic, right? is weight really that important? Um, I think in traditional bikes, yes. In electric bikes, it becomes less and less important, right? And, you know, just, just remember, you do have a motor, it's gonna make a big difference. Certainly saving a little bit of weight will help. And, you know, you can find different ways to save a little bit of weight on the bike specifically. As you ride the bike more, you might lose a little bit of weight yourself. It's happened to me. Um, my weight can fluctuate a little bit, but I hope you guys enjoy this video. If you have any questions or maybe you have your own experience with the weight of the bike, your own kind of experience, like moving through this thought process coming from traditional bikes, like wait, 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 it's so important. And then like, you know, realizing an electric bike, maybe it's not the most important detail. I think from my experience, comfort is a little bit, comes above that. So what do you think? Let me know. I look forward to seeing you in a future video, and uh, see you soon.